In order for a cell to carry out the many chemical reactions it needs to, substances must enter and leave the cell via the cell membrane. And this can happen in three ways, diffusion, osmosis, and active transport. Now in this part, we're gonna be talking about osmosis. Now osmosis is all about water. Water moves from a more dilute solution to a more concentrated one across a partially permeable membrane. What we mean by this is that where there is pure water, um, so very, very dilute solution, the more water that's in a solution, then the more dilute it is, um, that has what we call a very high water potential. All the water is free to move around and wants to move around. Okay, and that is represented by the right hand side of this diagram here. Free water, high water potential, very, very dilute. On the left hand side of this diagram, you can see some orange sugar molecules. Now those sugar molecules are interacting with the water and meaning that there isn't as much free water there to move around. So the right hand side has a high water potential and the left hand side has a low water potential and water moves from high water potentials to low water potentials across a partially permeable membrane. So the more stuff you dissolve in water, whether it's sugar or salt, the lower the water potential goes. So here's a, a little example here that you might have in a practical. It is a sort of model cell, so it's a, like a membrane, show that visking tubing is permeable to to small molecules and we've got a solution or inside, a sugary water solution, and we've got a sugary water solution outside, okay? But inside is 0.1% sugar, all right? And outside is 0.5% sugar solution. So which one has the highest water potential inside this visking tubing or outside? Well, water moves, again, like I said, from a high water potential to a low water potential. And the area with the highest water potential here is the inside the visking tubing because it's only got 0.1% sugar. The outside has got more sugar in it. The more sugar means lower water potential. So water moves out from inside the visking tubing in this example to the solution outside. Now, if you uh, place a plant cell in pure water, um, the cell will swell up because of osmosis. Water moves from the high water potential outside the cell to the lower water potential inside the cell. The reason that inside the cell is lower water potential is because cytoplasm's got all sorts of stuff dissolved in it, sugars and, and other molecules are dissolved in there, so that lowers the water potential. So in this case, water would move into the plant cell, the cell would swell up and it would go tight against the cell wall. Cell walls are very, very strong in plant cells, so the cell will not burst and we say that that cell has become turgid. If you put a plant cell in a more sort of concentrated solution, then it's likely that water will move out because the inside of the cell is now got a higher water potential than the outside. So water is gonna move out of the cell. You might get a bit going both ways depending on the precise concentration of the solution you've put it in. Um, but the cell uh, membrane will probably not be pushing on the cell wall quite so hard because there's less water inside now, and we say that, say that the cell is becoming flaccid. Now, if that continues and you put a plant cell in a very, very concentrated solution, maybe sort of salt sea water, that kind of salty water, um, then lots of water will move out by osmosis from the higher water potential inside to the lower water potential outside, and the cell membrane might shrink right up and peel away from the cell wall, as you can see here, and we say that that cell has become plasmalized. Now, animal cells are a bit different. They don't have a strong cell wall to help them maintain any kind of shape. So if lots of water moves out of them, then the membrane will just shrivel up and it, you say that the cell has become crenated. If you put um, uh, animal cells, such as these ones, these are red blood cells in pure water, then water will move into them from high water potential to low water potential by osmosis across a partially permeable membrane and the cells will burst. There's no cell wall to withstand the pressure. The cells will burst, we call it lysis, okay? Now another practical you should be aware of uh, is using potatoes to investigate osmosis. What you can do is you can actually work out 
the osmotic potential, basically how much, um, how concentrated the solution is inside potato cells by doing this practical. Okay, so this is the method. What you do is you use a cork borer to take five cores from a potato, all right? And you cut off any excess skin on the outside and you use a ruler and a scalpel to trim them all to the same length because we want that to be a control variable, okay? Then you block the cylinders using paper towels to remove any excess water on the outside because we're interested in how much water moves in or out. And if there's already water on the outside, that's going to ruin our experiment. And we're going to put them into, uh, we're going to weigh them first to get their initial mass. And then we are going to add them to the following salt solutions, okay? From 0, 0.0 moles up to one molar solution. So a range of five different salt solutions. After 15 minutes, you remove the cylinders and blot them again to get the excess water off the outside and then record their final mass. Now, I what you'd expect to find is that the ones in pure water or, or zero moles salt solution, so just water, are going to gain mass. Water will move in by osmosis from an area of high water potential to a low water potential inside the potato cells and they will gain water and the whole core of potato will gain mass. The, uh, the opposite extreme, so cylinder E, which is in very, very concentrated solution, we expect those cells to lose water from high water potential to low water potential in the, nice, in the concentrated solution outside, and therefore for the, that one to lose mass. Okay, so once you make a final results table, the key here is to work out the percentage change in mass that makes the results more valid. We can compare the results if we work out percentage change. Okay, so you work out percentage change using that equation, and that would allow you to then uh, plot a graph showing the percentage change in mass against the salt concentration. So the first tube, is, it would be zero on the salt concentration. You see that's gained lots of mass. Tube E, the opposite extreme, has lost lots of mass and the other results are in a, in, along that line. And that point at which it crosses the x-axis there, uh, that salt concentration is the equivalent to the concentration inside those potatoes.